Hello ladies and gentlemen of the internet and welcome to this public service announcement about how to take care of your clay sculpture. In particular, your water-based clay sculpture. Oil-based clays really don't need a lot of taking care of. But if your sculpture is made of water-based clay, this video is for you. If you are new to the channel, subscribe and hit the link below to visit my Patreon page. If you are looking to become a better sculptor, you can learn from me personally or if you just enjoy the content and would like to support the channel to help keep it going and improving, the Patreon page is for you. There's a link in the description below and all the support is greatly appreciated. Back to the task at hand. I'm going to use my current sculpture, PT, as an example. But first, let, let me paint you a picture. It's 9 a.m. in the morning, I've had breakfast, and coffee and I'm ready to start sculpting and my model is late but he's always late so it's okay it gives me plenty of time to carefully unwrap my sculpture I'm already pretty far into the project the sculpture is blocked in and when I show up at 9 a.m. this particular Monday morning it has been neatly wrapped in plastic by me let me show you how the day progresses as it pertains to taking care of your clay sculpture. First order of business is obviously to unwrap the sculpture so that we can get to the clay. Now, you want to be careful doing this because you don't want to damage the sculpture. So, I, I'm very careful while doing all of this stuff and I take my time, I do it neatly and carefully. To help seal the plastic, I've used clothes pins. Not that it makes much of a difference, probably, but I'm pretty neurotic about this stuff, so I used them. Either way, the clothespins must come off for me to get to my sculpture. They are placed around the areas where it's hard to get the plastic really, really tight, like around the poles that go into the hips and the armature that comes into the arms. Then the great unwrapping continues. I have one big plastic sheet to cover everything in general. Then there is another one wrapped tighter on the clay and there is smaller plastic bags covering the arms. The arms dry out really really fast because they're thin so I wrap those extra carefully with special blue bags that smell of lime or lemons. I can't really tell. You'll probably also, if you're a keen-eyed viewer, that is, notice some continuity errors here. All I can say to that is try not to worry so much about it. These shots are shot at different points in time, but the overall procedure is the same every time, so that's all you should worry about. Here's another example of an unwrapping done on the King of the Rusted Crown. Again, you can see how, how carefully it's been wrapped. Okay, since this is not really a video about sculpting, we'll skip all the sculpting and we'll get to long break. The day usually goes by more or less like this. I unwrap the sculpture, which you just saw. Then I sculpt for 25 minutes, take 5 minute break, then another 25 minutes, then another 5 minute break, then another 25 minutes of sculpting, then we get a long break, which is a 15 minute break where we drink coffee and talk about nothing. During the other breaks I never spray or wrap my sculpture unless it's super dry. If you spray the sculpture too often and too much, the clay gets too wet and working becomes an impossible nightmare, a sloppy mess. If your sculpture is dripping wet, like this, and you try to work on it, you will fail, so don't do it. But for long break, I do spray and wrap it, essentially doing the quick and dirty version of the wrapping up job. Just spray the sculpture and throw the plastic sheet over it to cover it modestly, and it seems to do a good enough job for 15 minutes at least. And so the sculpture sits there while we drink coffee and talk about nothing for 15 minutes. Usually more like 20, but 
whatever. Then we get back and unwrap again and get back to work. And again we work for 3 25 minute periods with 5 minute breaks until we reach the end of the day. Or in this case until we reach around 12 o'clock which is lunch. So it's the end of the day and it's time to go home or to eat lunch. Either way the sculpture needs to be wrapped so the pro whole process needs to be done backwards just like we did earlier. We need to ensure our sculpture won't be dried up and cracked laying on the floor as dry rocks when we come back to it the next day. And this actually does happen. Uh, a lot of people do not take well care of their sculpture and I don't see anything that could be possibly worse than spending a hundred hours and hundreds of euros on something for it to end up as dry clay rocks on your studio floor. Less than ideal is an understatement. So I take very very good care of my clay. Wrapping the sculpture up for the day starts with spraying it. However, before we get to that, actually, let's talk about spray bottles for a few moments. There are many spray bottles. You can buy cheap ones that you have to work hard to spray with, and if you use those, your forearms will hurt badly every day after spraying your big sculpture. Or you can get this one, which I think is meant for spraying pesticide or, or, or something. Either way, it works great. All you have to do is pump it to pressurize the bottle like this and then you spray to your heart con heart's content. I strongly advise getting one like this if you're serious about sculpting, especially if you sculpt big sculptures. Or you can go old school like the ancient Greeks and, and spray your sculpture like this. Your choice. Another crucial thing to mention is that not only can spraying and wrapping save your sculpture, but if your clay has dried a bit too much, you can use paper towels or a t-shirt to moisten the clay back up again. However, both are, I believe, short-term solution. Paper towel dries fast and starts sucking moisture out of your piece, so it's only a solution for overnight or a few hours at most. The wet t-shirt lasts longer but will eventually leave a cotton fabric texture on your sculpture, which is not so nice, and if you leave it for too long, the t-shirt will rot and kind of separate in layers, sticking to your sculpture and creating a big old mess. But it's, it, it works well for, for overnight or a few days. For this particular sculpture, I am not gonna do any of these things. Because if you do them, the sculpture can very easily end up being too wet, too soggy. So I don't like doing them unless I really need to. But I present these two techniques to you so that you can add them to your toolbox. Now, let's get into the actual wrapping process that I perform after every time I sculpt any sculpture. I spray everything first, then I start with wrapping the bottom of the sculpture. A lot of moisture could potentially escape out at the bottom, so I'm very careful making sure the plastic is tucked into the clay at the bottom to seal it. And I also seal around the legs using clothes pins. The legs are fairly thin, one of the feet is fairly thin and not attached to the base and so it will dry out really quickly. So it's a good idea to seal them up really well. Tucking the bag in underneath the clay where the clay meets the wooden base is a good trick that can be used on any sculpture. It seals the edge very well, though there's usually a bit of re-sculpting needed to fix that bottom edge. However, it, in my case, it's just the base. It's not anything vital, so I'm not so worried about having to re-sculpt that a little bit. Then I spray everything again before moving on. I wrap the arms and seal the end where the armature sticks out of the clay to ensure that the arms don't dry out. The arms are very likely to be the first area to dry out and crack because they're so thin and they're not really connected to any big mass of clay. Big masses of clay hold 
water better and last longer before they dry out, obviously. Naturally, of course, the head is next to the arm in this case, and so the head needs to be wrapped as well, and it goes well with the arm. Head and arm, they go, they go well together. Okay, with the arms, head and base over with, it's time to get into the meat of the process. And so we bust out the first gigantic plastic wrap. It's a bit unwieldy at first, but with some effort, you can make it happen, you can make it work. I spray areas first to make sure the plastic lays down really nicely on the surface doing my best to minimize the amount of air in between the plastic and the clay. Once this part of the process is done, it's time to put the big sheet of plastic over the top of everything. I'm not so sure this sheet does much, but I'd rather have it, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Then it's on with the clothespins, around the areas where my intuition tells me air could enter. And that's it, we are done wrapping our sculpture. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I encourage you to check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work, and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. There are several rewards, one of them being the maquette for this sculpture you've seen me working on today. So check it out, there is a link in the description below. I'm enjoying a lot making these in-between videos filled with information, and I hope you enjoy them as well and find some useful information in them. In the near future I'll do some videos on the do's and don'ts of sculpture, 10 ways to make your sculpture better, and other videos like this. Eventually I hope to have a full library of how I go about sculpture. The exciting part is that a different project brings different challenges and as time goes on my technique will probably change as well, prompting new videos to be made. So let me know if you enjoyed the video in the comments below, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Share with your friends and family, as sharing the video really helps me reach more people, which helps me grow the channel, which is always nice. Thank you for watching, keep creating and I hope to see you in the next one.